five, four, three, two, one. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Going Bad. I right, hope you are so having a great day. We have Frank Fry. <laughs> Frank and it is, um, it is our anniversary special. Frank and Potato Bake. 15 years of marriage. Frank and Kraut Stew. And my wife is in the middle of deciding what we're going to eat for our anniversary dinner. Frank and Cheese Chili. <laughs> uh, Cocktail weenies. Cocktail weenies. Frank and Crown Corn. She has found a cookbook that has an entire section on how to cook hot dogs. Frank and Savory Noodle Bake. Into your diet. And Chili Con Weenie. We're very glad you're all here. Saucy Franks. <laughs> Hi, Coco Noel. Hi, Wonderful Blessed Life. Nutty Puppies. Hi, Life Unwired. <laughs> Vegetable <laughs> Melody Frank. Uh, Katie Going Batty. Frank and Ruben Sandwich. Tucker, how are you? Frankfurter Devil. That's what and, those are. And if you are a hot dog fan, mm -hmm. this is the episode for you. Frank because and if, Barbecue. Because if we don't know anything, we know how to be cheap. Best ham dogs. Oh my goodness, the best ham dogs. Glazed Hi. apples and Franks. <laughs> Hi, Tim. Hi, Hoffman Family Homestead. Franks and cabbage. Hi, Alicia. Hi, Pamela. My <laughs> Mass Faith 3 is here. This is my favorite one, a wiener bean pot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, we're giggling like Wiener you. bean what? Wiener, wiener, wiener bean, bean pot. pot. Yes, that'll Hot be dogs quite delicious. delicious. Swiss and Frank spirals. Ooh, ooh la la. And then it ends with frappe. Frappe? What's <laughs> no. a frappe exactly? What, no. Probably like it's a Frank like, and Furner, like. No, it's like when you coffee when you get coffee. Thing. It went from Frankfurters to frappe. A hot That's dog nasty. coffee. So, coffee in my hot, hot dog in my coffee. Is that what we're talking about? So I got it. We're we're that just picture. Just no. <laughs> just a thousand times no. Thousand I'm telling times. you right. Okay, now. no wait. I can show them the picture. So. Here is, so this is my, uh, this was, I'm going to show you Go one of my books first. Yep, you gotta see it. So this was one of my books that I got when I went to the, um, Goodwill, the Goodwill Outlet. Outlet. And I got this book for a buck because we paid for them by the pound. And this book was in from 1970. So there was a lot of hot dog recipes in here, <laughs> which we're not, I'm not a huge fan of hot dogs, but, but they took a hot dog. And they put it on French bread, two hot dogs, put cheese on it, wrapped it in bacon, and then baked it in the oven. Like, if that doesn't stop your heart, I don't know what will. <laughs> well, it, it, our family stopped being fans of hot dogs a long time ago. Yes, when they watched How It's Made. How It's Made is one, is one of those shows that ruined hot dogs yes. for my daughter. The meat jello? She, no. no. Meat it pudding. was meat pudding, meat actually. Pudding. Meat pudding, I'm and, sorry. And she will not enjoy it Oh, we it forgot Frank's Florentine. <laughs> Frank's Florentine? Yes. No. What is Frank's Florentine? Okay, Share that with us. It has spinach, rice, condensed cheddar cheese soup, <sighs> finely chopped onions, milk, and Frankfurters cut in half, and then it has a cross cut in them. Oh my goodness. Because you gotta fancy up your Franks. <laughs> That's just not right. You can't fancy up hot dogs. That's the thing. Yeah. So. I think the best thing you can do to a hot dog is throw some Cincinnati chili on it. Put some cheese and onions and mustard over it. Amen, brother. And eat it that way. Do not cook it into some sort of pot pie. Do or not Florentine it. <laughs> don't Florentine it and certainly don't jello it. And, and absolutely under no pot. circumstances do you put it into the bean pie. Yes. So but I had to love and the reason <laughs> I got this book is because we talked about one time about how, you know, back in the day they encased everything in jello. The first picture you turn to. Whatever I'll tell it you, is, it's in case and Just leave that up for a second. Leave that up for a second. There was not a reunion in my family where that did not make an appearance. So, yeah, everything. Feel, there was jello, everything. My grandmother even put jello, cabbage, and jello. We talked about that on our live stream before. So, but and this if you didn't have oh, enough this is juices awful. This is for awful. a canned fruit cocktail, you can make a pie out of it. Oh. How disgusting does that sound? <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. Yes, so. Mm -mm -mm. Welcome to the 1970s and all we can cook with. <laughs> Preach, Kevin. <laughs> hot dogs and, I know, yeah. Well, welcome, you guys. We're glad you're here. Um, <laughs> that looks vile. Yes, it does. <laughs> there are so many ways that we are not going to talk about 
Um, not down with cooked grapes. Weenies are hermetically sealed. It's true prepping. Weenies hermetically sealed. No, that's all right. I'm not a big hot dog person. Well, here's the thing. Anything that goes from being a meat into a pudding and then back into a meat shape. No. That could be a problem. Yes. There could be some, there could be some processing that happens. Well, welcome guys. We're glad you're with us. We've been married for 15 years and she hasn't killed me yet. That's Look us. at that young couple. Look at them. That's Aren't they pretty? My, that's before he turned my hair gray. Uh, before I? No, actually, uh, I was in you. That was our youngest one. I was going to say. <laughs> He's our adventurer. He, he, he. So. But, those, those two young folks had no idea on that day what would be for, ahead of them. And they've been blessed ever since. So, all of those flowers, I did those. I used to be a florist, yep. and I did my own wedding flowers because I didn't have, I wouldn't have anybody else to fuss at. That's right. If she I wouldn't have them, anybody else to do it. Darn fault. So that's right. Yep. I'll tell you. So yes, fifteen years. Fifteen very wonderful years. It doesn't even feel like it's been fifteen years. It feels shorter than that. Yes. She typically holds my hand to keep from beating me with it, but most of the time, that's not true. We get along very well. No. Um, I we, can't. Yeah, well, he spoiled my plan. My plan was to smother him in his sleep, but he has the breathing machine now, and I can't do that. I'm just kidding. No, I'm not. <laughs> mm. I was thinking ahead, decided to go ahead and get that sleep apnea. Yeah. Um, yeah. So anyway, uh, you know, it's funny. I always looked up to couples that were at year 15 or whatever, and we're here. I can't even believe it. I can't even process the idea that we've been together. For 15 years. 15 years. And it's been wonderful. We're headed into the Christmas season, and I am so different than my wife. Let me prep this. Let me set it up a little bit. Um, my my experience with Christmas has been um, a, a different one. So when I even when I was single, I would dress my apartment up for Christmas right after Halloween. Like the moment Halloween ended, Christmas decorations came out because I wanted to celebrate Thanksgiving through all the holidays. Well, I still, um, did you find the expiration date on your wedding license? Heavens no. It doesn't expire. It's it, not like it, your driver's it license. It dies out. <laughs> yes. It's, One of us has to kick the bucket. That's right. So. Uh, till death do us part. Yes. That's right. And uh, I am for sure on that side of uh, um, that side of thing. Are you going to grow a mo for Movember? Is that like a mohawk? Have you seen his hair? <laughs> I have a reverse mohawk. See, it's all kind of retreating to my back. And it's coming around this way. Yeah, <laughs> and it's coming out my eyebrows. It's like a scary eyebrow. <laughs> anyway. Um, we are, uh, 27 years. Congratulations. That's awesome, Karen. Good job. That's, that's, that's who we look up to, right? Katie, did you see two families? Yes, thing? I did. Yes. Um, uh, so, yeah. I had something in my we brain and I lost it. Years. Oh, Craig Smith music. Oh, yeah, that's right. So I've already started listening to Christmas music. As you know, you've followed my face. If you follow me on Facebook, I put a couple of uh, moments on there where I was enjoying some Christmas music. Now, my wife is not, she's not there yet. I'm not a Grinch, but I'm like... No, you're... she's not a humbug, and she's not She's not a Grinch. She's no, not a, a um, Scrooge. A Scrooge. She's not that, no. But she just wants to... I feel like that Thanksgiving needs to have its day before Christmas comes along. And so I think happy. that the Christmas decorations... Mm -hmm. Encourage exactly for Florida singularity Thanksgiving, y'all. Please, <laughs> so, yes, that's right. I agree with that. I I just you know humbly disagree and and will say, hey, the Hastings family farms, premium mom to twins, um, and I just feel like we need to begin the celebration early because this is a big deal. The, the Christmas holiday season is a big deal, and we just we need to keep. Keep celebrating it and, and begin the party now. She I'm not decorating yet. We're going to be getting Christmas decorations out on Saturday, Friday. No, we're not. Yes, we are. And uh, uh, we're not getting the Christmas tree out yet because we're going to get a live Christmas tree. And um, well, that too. And the house that we had before had like ten, what, twelve foot ceilings? Well, they like were they yeah. pitch ceilings. So I had a nine foot tree. I have eight foot ceilings in this house. 
my tree don't fit in this house. <laughs> so I have to find other ways to use to decorate with that because just don't, if you have an artificial tree that you're not using anymore, just don't throw it away. Use the greenery other places in your house. I've done that for years and years. Yep. And, years. and you're going to take us through uh, decorating our mantle yes. for Christmas. And I've got a special Christmas tree treat for those of you who like uh, trains. And uh, we're going to put the train up, I hope, hopefully downstairs if we can find a table for it. Um, just wanted to let you know, I'll miss Devo in the AM. Ah, oh, I have to leave home at 3, 3 a.m. Oh, and 4 a.m. at my time. Oh, okay. for your son well, serving. We'll be praying well, for you. I guess Sharon. if you're going to go, yeah. there you go. You know, if you gotta, if you got to miss, that's a good reason to. All right, so a mo... 44 years! A mo is a mo mustache in support of men's health. Go check out movember.com. Yes, I've heard of that. I thought it was No Shave November. It is No Shave November, and it's uh, prostate awareness, so make sure you do that, so too. So does that mean that I don't have to shave my legs? Nope, you don't have to. Oh, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Our daughters in the back are going, oh, I can't believe they're talking about this. Oh, well, hey, you know... Um, why is your channel called Going Batty? Well, you'll experience that in a few minutes. <laughs> it, it is a play on our on our last name. It is, but we're so. not telling you what that is. No. Actually, we can't take credit for our name. No, we can't. Uh, we have to give uh, props to Big Family Homestead and Brad and Krista for helping us come up with it many uh, months ago. Can you believe it's only been months? Yeah. That's That blows my mind. But yeah. anyway, um, or your pets. Oh, my. <laughs> oh awesome. my it's goodness! It's Sasquatch time. Hi, <laughs> my name is Angie, but you can call me Chewbacca. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh mercy, mercy, mercy! Oh my gosh! Mountain Mama says they're getting ready to put their decorations up now. We have a radio station in Cincinnati called 93.3 Star FM, and they have started playing Christmas music already. And uh, we we just celebrate. I celebrate that, and it totally annoyed my wife. But um, here's the thing. Um, we have to get ready and start thinking through the plans for Christmas already Family has started to make the plans. Like, are we doing this or are we doing that? And you know, whose house are we going to be at? And you know, what are we going to get them? And what, do we know what we're getting? Should we get anything? And oh my goodness, I'm exhausted on that part of it already, yes. right? But yeah. we have wonderful family, so it makes it very easy. Well, I gotta tell you though, like my my favorite Christmas present and my Two family homestead that does. The channel name of Going Batty, Proof is in the Pudding. pudding. Yes. But not hot dog pudding. No. Mm. No. Meat pudding. Uh, my sister in law, she does has always done like the best mm. Christmas gifts for our kids. And she's done it since they were little enough to eat cereal. I was a little mad she thought of it and I didn't. Well, and it's awesome. This was a well, good idea. She got it from her aunt, because her aunt would do the same thing. Yeah. But my sister in law, Nicole, she would let her children pick out a box of any kind of cereal. For my kids. And so, you know, they would get like the stuff that, you know, I won't buy them like with the marshmallows and <laughs> and the, you know, chocolate frosted covered sugar bombs and stuff like that. So it's like that once a year <clears> thing <throat> where they get the really fun cereal. That's well, right. Well, actually, Sorry. one year, I the three of the boys got like Lucky Charms, <laughs> went into their boxes of cereal and I ate all the marshmallows. I ate all the marshmallows out of them. Oh, yeah. She ate all the marshmallows out of their cereal. They weren't happy about that. Yeah. So, um, what they're saying is is that, um, uh, does this mean that uh, one of your live feeds, the family, uh, will be a family Christmas caroling session? Yes. No. Absolutely. No. Um, and a thousand times yes. Matter of fact, it might happen tonight. No. Um, and then Two Family Homestead said, I have no problem putting up my Christmas decorations. Look. Oh, look, a menorah. <laughs> you put up as many menorahs as you want. I love it. Bring it on. Yep. It, the sooner the better. Yes, we need a little Christmas right this very minute. Anyway, um, no Thanksgiving in the UK because we all left. You don't celebrate us getting out of there? 
I, they might be happy about yeah, li- losing going batty. I don't know, but um, us Americans. <laughs> nah, I tell you. Um, and anyway, De Jesus Family Farm says going batty sings the holiday top hits. That's right. That's right. All right. So anyway, we are making plans for Christmas, and uh, you know what we try to do is make sure that you know one of those days uh, you know the 24th 25th 26th we're spending time together as a family you know that that you can be pulled in so many different ways during the holidays that on christmas day you just got to take a minute just a minute just one minute and be together as a family and do do uh christmas and do the the christmas story and all the things that you know that go that, that direction so um excuse me uh the the christmas plan is still ironing itself out on my yeah. side of the family but it is it, usually, it's already being talked about we usually do christmas eve with your mom we do usually and then if we're in town but yeah. now we're always in and, town and it it used to be that we would do like when we didn't live in town i think it was like the maybe the week after christmas yep that we did Christmas with my family, and then that way, the day of Christmas, they could be with the other, my brothers could be with their in-laws and stuff. But this this year, my mom asked for Christmas Day, and she's usually pretty flexible when it, she's not like demanding that you have to be here on a certain day, and because she knows that it's hard when you've got, you know, you know your family and yep. their family. That's and right. So, um, but we're, <laughs> we're excited. We're excited about. We are excited, and I'm, you know what I'm else? I'm not as excited as him, but oh, I'm, I'm getting. Excited. I mean, like, I love Christmas and everything. It's just not time yet. I, Thanksgiving needs to have its day, and then we can go. Yeah. So, but um. Yeah. So we are. Let's see. We talked about our Christmas plans. But wait, wait. What? There's a big thing going on tomorrow, and, and I'm very excited about it. Um, the uh, the thing is, is Heather and Katie are making a live personal appearance they're going they're going to uh a uh a a gathering um uh for a girl's night out if you will where they're going to be representing thrive life at, in lebanon ohio and if you guys are anywhere nearby and you are local you can stop by and see them um and there's more details if you uh if I can you put names for right, faces that's right. Yes. You can start. You can start uh, having some, having some, uh, you know, adding it all up. But anyway, yeah. I, I, uh, I, I do have to tell them. Tell so them. So today uh, we were in our homeschool. We were talking about the industrial revolution and everything, and the pros and cons of it and everything. Take your bouncing and, ball. And I was telling that I was telling the kids that. Um, a lot of Charles Dickens's work was written about the time the the industrial revolution was coming, coming in. And so I, <laughs> I had them watch A Christmas Carol <laughs> because we have the one with George C. Scott, which is like my all time favorite one. Now, when Christmas season hits, like when I think Christmas season's hit, I'm all about it. <laughs> like, you know, A Christmas Carol, the George C. Scott one, It's a Wonderful Life. Um, 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 Hi, Rebecca. Oh, shoot. There's the, Hi, books are one. people the, too. A Christmas story. Right, right now, Max is downstairs watching A Christmas Story. So, with little uh, with Ralphie and Ralphie, the Red Ryder being yep. done. So, um, shoot so yeah, so out. he's You'll like, shoot your eye yeah, out, shoot kid. Your eye out, kid, yeah. So, um, so yeah, so he's down there doing that. But yep. so we're, but yeah, we're making an an appearance. That's right. At this, they are representing Thrive Life at this at, at this experience, and it is going to be the bomb. They're going to do a great job. I should remember what it's called. I've just uh, it's, drawn a blank. It's in. Uh, I can't remember Hold either. On. Hold I didn't on. I'll do bring it either. Up. But um, we're. It's one of those things that we're starting to do more often. Girls' is night out at the Enchanted Village. There you Enchanted go. Enchanted Village. Village. Yes. We're gonna go see. Princess that's right. Lebanon, Ohio. Fairies. So. That's right. Yeah, that's what it is. So, so um, be uh, be there, be square, dude. Totally. Um, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Another exciting thing happened this week, which was not good for. My uh, my my gluten free uh, adventure that I'm on, but we made apple cider donuts this week. They were week. so good. Oh yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you, folks. Um, there is a place in Maryland, and I you know I like Maryland and I like Baltimore a lot for a lot of different reasons, but let me tell you, there is a donut place there. And this is going somewhere, so stick with me. <laughs> There's a donut place there called the Fractured Prune. 
they make to order whatever donut you want. So you'll go from ordering your donut and they'll cook it right there and hand it to you hot, piping hot and fresh. Let me tell you, this is, at the time, this is one of the greatest donuts I'd ever tasted until this gorgeous, beautiful woman made apple cider donuts and it put fractured prune to shame. To shame! Oh my gosh, and it was so good. I don't see it here, but I made them because Don and mm. Terry kept asking for the recipe and asking for the recipe. Right. And so right. I made those especially because she had asked. And, they, and I'm like not a habanero. huge donut fan, but um, and let me tell you, those, those kinds of donuts, man, awesome. We were always big fans of Krispy Kreme when you could walk right in and get the hot fresh now. Yeah. Well, and I made I've made the yeast donuts before Mrs. Kylie's donuts. Yep. Yes. Those were really good. Little pillows of heaven is what, oh my, what my kids call them. But these are like an old fashioned donut. They're more like the um, cake donuts. But, no, oh they're God. not. They're nothing like but it. They weren't nearly they're as They're amazing. Dense. They were so good. But they're that, light. That they're fluffy. Donut cutter. No. Complete poop. Don't. It, it, don't no. do it. The one where you you click in the little hole cutter in the middle. Awful. Don't do that. Just get a biscuit cutter and then get a smaller one to go in it. And not a biscuit color. Not color. A biscuit cutter. cutter. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Yes. So yeah, I mean and biscuits <laughs> as an <in> American biscuits <laughs> not. English biscuits, which are different. Their biscuits are cookies. Right. Our biscuits are more like scones, only cut into round shapes. And they're <laughs> so, not sweet. Yeah, they're usually yeah, not sweet. Yeah, scones are sweeter so, than... We call, yeah. yeah, scones are like biscuits, only they're no. sweet. They, these are these are a totally different thing. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. um, but the, the apple cider donuts were amazing. And I just, you know, you didn't, you didn't need to use a whole lot of apple cider to get the apple mm -hmm. flavor to come no. out on them. But they were sugar and cinnamon, and they were amazing, and it was heart-stoppingly delicious. It was awesome. It was very heart-stoppingly yes. delicious. Um, just don't uh, mention Landing the dots. Goose was asking, did we get to hear the story of how you guys met? Um, uh, so that's, that's Jake. Jake's new to our channel. He's never heard our story. How, so. Well, and Wonderful Blessed Life just said, how did the Going Batty Clan get started? Uh, well, let's go there. All right. I wasn't going to go there, but let's go there. Okay. So. All right. Well, I was born in... Oh, no. Dude, no not that's, that, okay. that's not that. So, I, you better start the story. I was going think. to um, a church in the Cincinnati area where I lived. And there wasn't a whole lot going on for like the 20-something age. So, I had a friend that she was a really good friend of mine since we were like 6th, 7th grade. And she wanted me to go to this young adult group at a church in Dayton. And she had been invited by a guy friend of hers to go. And um, so I, I went up there and at first I didn't want to go because it was like, I don't want to be like the new fish thrown into the pond. Like I, I had been to young adult groups like that where it's like, oh look, fresh meat. <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> ah, and then, like you're like swarmed by I'm all here these, to get closer to God, not you. Yes, back off, all of Smelly. these guys that are wanting, you yeah. know, are looking for wives. And so, and I was just like, I don't, I'm not sure I want to do this. But I went and I had a really good time and I started making friends and stuff. And I had been there for probably about two years. And then this guy started coming and he was playing in the band and um, he sang. He had a really great voice and everything. And I, but I didn't know. We kind of ran in different circles. So like there was kind of two. <laughs> I just ran two in circles. Two different groups in this group, and he kind of ran with one group, and I was kind of in another one. But um, so yeah, we just. But then we met each other, like actually met met each other. Um, we had a mutual friend that was having everyone come over. To, well, he invited everyone, but a group of people came over to his house when HBO had the series Band of Brothers come out. Great and, series, um, by the way. And Incredible we were watching series. that at his house. And, you know, my my grandmother is from the South, and my family, we are people that cook. And I've always been taught that it's rude to go to somebody's house and not bring anything to eat. So I made my man catcher cookies, oh. which they weren't called that. They were just called cookies. <laughs> They've been nicknamed that since ever so, since we got married. Um, And I made those, and I brought them with me to kind of share with everyone well that got his attention so that wasn't the first time we got each other's attention i'm gonna tell my side okay. of the story okay so heather went for her reasons but i had 
moved back from Indiana after kind of falling apart and was getting my life back together and, and you know, kind of getting to know all all these people. And um, I was actually stuffing the belly of airplanes at a place that was similar to UPS called Airborne Express. And I would drive a half hour to work every night from 11 to 4, and I would stuff the bellies of these airplanes, and then I would go during the day on job interviews to find a place where I could be a youth pastor. And during that time, I got connected to this group that Heather was a part of. And we were, um, we were, we were not in the same spot, but I kept noticing these girls that looked a lot like sisters, but they weren't related at all. No, we so <laughs> she has a very dear friend that looked exactly like her, but she not had blue eyes, but not that yeah. much. Uh, we were I kind mean, of the same height. We're kind of built the same. Maybe we fraternal had, twins. We had the same color identical. hair and everything, and people did mistake us for sisters or a lot. Like, well, I'm. I'm looking from the back of the room, kind of staring in Heather's table's general direction. And she's at a table with a bunch of people. She's a very popular young lady at the time. And (laughs) there was everyone was swarming around her. But she's watching the pastor give his talk. And I watch her. And there's Heather. And then there's no Heather. She falls off her seat. She just went right off the I seat. I fell off my chair. I had gotten my... I, I sit with like one leg <laughs> underneath <laughs> another one. And I had gotten my foot caught in the tablecloth. And it tripped me up. I, I went to go stand up and it tripped me up and I <laughs> fell over. So I'm like... She got up. Super graceful. <laughs> she got up. Awesome. She walked out. And then she came back in and... Everything was fine. I walked out because I had to laugh at myself. Because oh my, my god! My evil, my evil, not twin twin was laughing at me. So, and well, we had we had um, not had any experience with each other until we went on a retreat, and it was a canoeing trip mm-hmm. where we stayed overnight and we went canoeing the next day. And that night, I remember um, hearing from Heather later that we had first met. And the, her very first thoughts of me were, wow, he's loud. And that hasn't that changed was, a bit, has it, That was my dear? not twin twin. Yeah, I asked no, her, I, I said, th- yeah. what do you think of him? She goes, well, he's kind of loud. I am kind of loud. <laughs> he's kind of loud. It's okay. That's, <laughs> so. I've got lots of loud. So um, I can't even remember, but it was around Christmas time. And I was sitting in an Applebee's. And at this Applebee's was all of our friends from this group. Except for Heather and her very dear friend. Well, they wanted to go to the Waffle House, and I, I don't like the Waffle I House. I had never I been to a Waffle House. I know there's I... no room to talk. You're not going to be in a big group. It's just little booths, and you're not going to have any I space. I tell them something, too. Like, the Waffle House, like it was me and like three or four of my girlfriends, and then a couple of these guys. And one of them at the time, I didn't know liked me and I just didn't know because I was kind of oblivious to that but they picked a Waffle House and they picked it in the most ghetto fabulous part of town like oh it was fun I mean it it, was where the old GM plant used to be and it was closed (laughs) so and so we went in there and and it was kind of sketchy and there were some really shady people in there and stuff like that more like getting ready to order our food I don't even know if we got to order our food and uh, my my uh, really good friend Krista, my not twin twin. Yeah. Um, which is not Krista from Big Family Homestead, but it's an, another girl. It's really sweet girl, and she was kind of like, "Yeah, I think we need to go." <laughs> so and so we bolted, and she lived like we lived in these apartments, and they they look like houses, and they have like four front doors on it. So there was one house, and then another house, and then she lived you didn't in the let house. Let me finish my story. Further down, so we we went home. So her and I went home, and but. To our, Little apartment. Other things were happening. Yes. So I'm sitting at Applebee's and Heather's not there. They went off to Waffle House mm-hmm. and I am very unsettled. I am like fidgety and I'm, I'm checking for my keys and I'm doing this with my friend. And everybody's like, what is wrong with you? And I just looked at him and said, I am not supposed to be here. And my, my friend looks at me and goes, you're okay. 
Uh, all of us are here. Your friends are all here. We're getting drinks. We're going to have food. It's going to be fine. What What do you mean you're not supposed to be here? And I, I'm like, I'm not supposed to be here. I'm not supposed to be here. So I, I put my money down on the table. I tell my friend to pay for my drink. And I am out of there. And I drive all the way over to this Waffle House. Which is probably, what, 20 minutes away? Easily 20. No, no, no. It's more like 15, 20. It doesn't matter. I get over there. And I'm like, I've got to see her. I've got to go to this Waffle House. I have got to be near her. And so I drove to the Waffle House, peeked in the window, and guess what I saw? My shady people. Nothing. <laughs> An old guy that barely had any of his senses was talking to himself out in the front. And they were gone. I'm like, how did they eat and get out of there already? Because we didn't Because Applebee's <laughs> was moving like molasses. So I, I, I start making these deals with myself. I'm like, okay, I know, where, I know where she lives. And what I'll do is if I drive over there and all her lights are off or her front light is out and her inside lights are on, I won't knock on the door. I'll just leave a little note. You know, just a little creepy, right? Um, but then I go, okay, if her light is on, then I'll stop, I'll knock, and I'll say hello. Don't eat the volcano. Things you hear in the going batty house. Anyway, um, I go over to Heather's house. Not only are the lights on inside, but the light is on outside. And guess what? The door is open. Because it was unusually hot for... What was it? This is a good sign for me, it's folks. Like, it was like October, like the end of October. I already had the note written. And I was going to put it in her door if she didn't come to the door because she's like, who's the creeper at the door bugging me at night? But I knock on the door and she comes to the door with this kind of weird look on her face like... So here's what I was thinking. I'm like, oh, crud. Did I invite people over and forget that I invited people <laughs> over? Because I did do that once before. So. And so I walk in and she lets me in and I, I say, listen, I, you know, I'm, I'm this really messed up, broken guy. I, I I don't have a life, but I'd like to take you out on a date. And she said... That's fantastic. I would like for you to ask my dad. And I, and granted, so growing up in my house, my, my dad, his issue, his thing was, is not that, you know, I own you and people need to ask their permission to date you. But his thing was, is a guy knows what another Guess guy Guess who's on thinks. here? Who? Your not so evil twin. My not so evil twin is here. Jonathan Charles. Yes, I, yes, her, but his her name was not Jonathan. That's right. No, her name is not. <laughs> Hi, Jonathan. how are you? It's my not so evil We're twin. We're telling the story. We're telling the story. The story. So, um, but my with my dad, it was um, when you are infatuated with someone, you can see past a whole lot of red flags, and he said, you know, I need to know that that whoever wants to date and marry my daughter is man enough to talk to me about it because I knew a lot of guys that never met their girlfriend's parents ever. And so, um, so, and, and the rule was <laughs> with my parents, as long as you lived in their house, that was the rule. Mm -hmm. My brothers went to go meet their girlfriend's parents. And, um, so I moved out and so he kind of was like, um, okay. And then the night kind of ended there. And he's like, well, I'll give you a call. And I'm like, okay. And so I get on the phone to my dad and I said, dad, I've, I've, I've met someone who's interested in me. I said, I would like to go out on one date with him to see if there's anything there because you don't want to be like someone being like, yeah, you're the one for me. And you're like, oh, you're weird, but you're going to go meet my parents. <laughs> and so my dad was like, well, you don't live at home anymore. And he goes, so he goes, but I'm really glad that you still ask. He goes, yeah. He goes, I think it's smart for you to do that. And he goes, you know, anything further than that, if you think that there's something there, we would like to meet him. And I said, okay. So, um, we, <laughs> now I, in my head, I heard that. Now I'm I'm a kid from the streets, right? I mean, I I didn't I didn't have a dad growing up, and I wasn't 
ready to hear what she just said. I have to do what my job when I was trying to date a girl was to avoid the parents at all cost. And here was this beautiful uh, angel, gorgeous woman who actually wanted me to go face to face with a set of parents. Here's what happened in my spirit. Kevin, if it's worth anything, you're going to have to do it. You're just going to have to suck it up and do it. You're going to have to commit and see where it goes. So, we didn't do that first, though. I put on... Hold on. We have to... Okay, so we went he, to the, he left that little note oh, yeah. sitting on my, it was, I had a little coffee table. Yeah. And it was actually my door at first because he had, he had knocked and at first I didn't hear, I was back in my bedroom and I didn't hear, I thought I heard something, I peeked my head out and I saw somebody put something in my door and they were walking away. And so that's when I, I caught him, I guess. Yeah. But so I have that note and so he didn't call the next day mm-hmm. and he didn't call the next day. Nope. And he did not call the next day. No, it was I did a not. Week and a half. And so my friend Krista, I'm like, did I imagine this? Like, didn't? And and she was like, well, no, I don't think so, because you have the note. And I'm like, okay, just making sure. But um, so it was, and so we were at a Christmas party with this young adult group, and I was just like, well, maybe he changed his mind, and that's okay. I had no skin in the game at the point, and. You know, and it was like, okay, well, then he changed his mind. So we're at this Christmas party and like he shows up and I can feel myself just, I get red. Like, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to burst into flames. There he is. And I just, I was so like hot and I'm like, oh, and so, and and Chris is like, just calm down, just calm down. And I'm and he didn't talk to me almost all night. And so we kind of hung out a little bit and kind of didn't. And then he hung out with his friends. Great jerk. And then I was like, okay, well, he just, he changed his mind. That's no, okay. No, not and at so all. I'm walking out to my car, and all of a sudden I hear, Heather, Heather, wait, don't go anywhere. And I turn around, and there he is, and I'm thinking, you turd. <laughs> you just made me wait all night long and a week and a half. But I didn't say anything. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um,. Chris just says, Heather, Kevin, you cannot slap the grin off her face after that Christmas party. <laughs> this is true. Because he was like, you want to go out and we'll go out to dinner and, you know, and go see yeah. a movie and stuff yeah. like that. And I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, it was right. I mean, I came back and I'm like, he finally did it. He finally asked me. And she's like, it's about time. So. Well, and there is always another side. And it wasn't what you think. Um... I was not stringing her along because sure I sure felt like it. I was not. No, I, I. There was a point where I wanted to see if she was confident, confident enough in herself that it would not destroy her if I didn't call her back right away. Which you ain't met a stronger lady. I'm telling you. But oh, she wants to see a photo of us two back then. There you go. That's our wedding there we photo. Go. That's right there. Six yeah. months before that, I asked her to marry me. Six months before that, we met. Yeah. Um, oh. <clears throat> so I'm sitting there. I'm working, I have to work, and I'm stuffing the belly of airplanes. All of this stuff is going down at, at the church where I worked, where I, I was just starting to work there. Yeah. And so this week was filled with not just, I, I wasn't ignoring her, I was doing other things, and she was strong enough in her personality to go, hey, I can handle that. And I, I really I really respected that. But I did ask her out on a date, and guys, here's what we did. I took her. Uh, my plan was to take us to dinner and a movie, and it was, you know, to be a lovely evening of uh, hilarity. Oh, I forget I what movie we were going to see. I got to share this. I don't remember. I don't either. But I told my dad, I said, he's taking me out to a nice restaurant. He took me to a place called Jay Alexander's, which is a pretty nice restaurant. And I, and I was just like, I, I went to my dad for this advice because Kevin was actually the first guy that I ever dated like went on more than one date with there were like two other guys that i went on one date with each of them i'm like no but um (laughs) so i was like dad he's taking me to a nice restaurant because these other two guys didn't even take me out to dinner and i was like what should i order and he was like do not order a salad do not and he was like no man wants to see a girl chomping on rabbit food. He goes, no, you order yourself a steak. That's and the right. most expensive one you can find. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so, 
so I did. And she did. I did not the most expensive one, but I did order me a big yes. old slab of meat. And so. I was so proud. I, I had gotten the rattlesnake pasta. Now this wasn't this wasn't just some dive. This was Jay Alexander's. This is one of the nicest, nicer restaurants in Dayton. Oh, hold I, on just a second. Okay. Um, living the dream. How old was I? I was 26. Just turned 26 when I met you. And I was 30. You were 30 when you met me. 30. No, we're 31. six years apart. 31? No, I was 30. 20. I was 26 when I married you. 27, 28, 29, So I was 25 when I met him. I was 32. All right. So anyway, we don't do math. We don't math. I'm an arithmetic. Anyway, um, so we we go to dinner and we're having conversation. We're talking to each other. She like, she's asking me questions and we've got things in common. And it was amazing. And so I'm like, okay, forget the movie. Do you want to just go get some coffee and hang out? And she's like, sure. All right, so we went over to uh, this little uh, coffee joint. I don't think you've heard of it. It's uh, Star something. And um, Starbucks. I, we went to uh, get coffee, and I had a red Ford Ranger at the time mm-hmm. uh, with uh, four on the floor. And as we're pulling out of there with our coffee, mine spills down her boot. It goes into her purse, into her boot, and she says nothing. I don't find out about this story until six months after we're dating. I I didn't even know it hurt her. It was her. actually, I think, the uh, the night that we got engaged. I told him about it. It burned her. I had a red burn because that coffee was not. It was not cold. He we had just gotten it, and he drinks his coffee black with sugar in it. So there's nothing in it to cool it down. And so it poured into my boot and it burnt my leg. And I didn't want to tell him because I was having a really great time and I didn't want him to take me home because <laughs> I had gotten burnt by his coffee. And I didn't want him to feel bad either because that's like, that's like a guy's, you know, I would think one of the worst things that could happen is like on your first date, you hurt the girl that, you know, you're dating exactly. by accident. So. And, and- it was it it was so typically me too because I'm so klutzy anyway. I mean the the reason that I don't go hunting is because I'll trip and fall and hurt somebody. But we had a great night. We went to a local park. We uh, that had Christmas lights out it by did, the way, yes. and we 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 took some Christmas light bulbs out of the tree, and they that's not true. When you take one out, they don't all. Well, go they out. they're not like not the old on school this ones anymore, where you unscrew the light bulbs and the whole tree goes out. No. Oh like, my gosh, know. so funny. The um the <laughs> the the night goes on and we have this great time and we say goodnight. I take her home and just say goodnight and lo and behold the next the next date comes. And this date was the date to end all dates because what it was was a date with mom and dad and me not just mom and dad i was there too of course (laughs) but it was intimidating because i'll be honest with you i i have had um a lot of really negative opportunities i just haven't i just haven't gone into this situation before and i'm thinking to myself this is crazy what girl wants her dad to give permission and i was just backwards about it i was all upside down and jacked up but you know what i thought to myself i'm doing this I'm and, doing it. And I'm committing to it. And I'm going. I wanted to know he was man enough to go up to my dad and say, I want to date the only daughter that you have. <laughs> That's right. And like, my dad's not a scary guy. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, no. I mean, you don't know him. He is. He's not. He was great. He was a great. Big so we're at the so. table. We're at the dinner table in a restaurant called Copeland's. It was a awesome. Like New Orleans. New style. Orleans style yeah. restaurant. And uh, we're getting to know each other. And he looks at, he, you know, he. The, the the conversation lulls and I'm like get it out there Kev and I say well Mr. Elder I'd like permission to date your daughter but he went first of all he was very honest with him and said okay this is my past my past this is where my life has my been brokenness. this is where I'm gone and, yeah. and this is who I am now and so my dad listened and you know he he just listened he's a very classic good listener. line yeah this is a line I'll never forget he looks at me dead in my face and he goes you are not the person I would pick to date my daughter. And I went, ah! like this in my brain. I didn't do it in my face, but I'm pretty sure that my... Check, please. I'm, I'm pretty sure my eyes did this. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and I'm going, 
Oh, let there be a butt. Please let there be a butt. Please let there be a giant butt. In this song. <laughs> I'm telling you, it was like the I, I was done. I'm like, I'm out of here. I'll pay for it. I'll I'll get out of here. Just get me out of here. This is gonna be awful. But there was a butt. And he goes, but I trust my daughter's judgment and she sees something in you. And so over the next six months, he looks me dead in the eyes, which just made me freeze in fear. Um, he's not scared, though. He's not. He, he, what, he, no, he was but not. But he might have been in that moment. In that moment, <laughs> though, it was a little intimidating. And he goes, um, uh, he goes, you and I are going to get to know each other very well. And over the next six months, that's exactly what happened. Um, I spent a lot of time with her family. I spent a lot of time getting to know her. And uh, we we spent time getting to know all of all that we could know about each other and then the big day came well i just i want to say i think it was beneficial for you though um because kevin's dad wasn't around when he was a kid and Very he beneficial. just and so he didn't know he didn't have any examples in, in his life of what it meant to be a good father and a good husband well, I, I had my uncle well, and I had my uncle, grandfather. Your grandpa, but but to see to see yeah. parents functioning the way that they're supposed to mm -hmm. um, was something that he didn't grow up in. It That's wasn't right. in his house, so he got to experience my parents. And it was funny because my sister in law one time said something that Kevin was like, uh, "Yes," she she said because she she comes from a family that there's some dysfunction there too and she was like when i met your parents i was like are these people for real nobody is this nice and kevin was like that's exactly what i thought when i met them i mean so. you sit down in their house and they're waiting on you hand and foot you don't have to do anything do you want this do you want that do you want some of the da -da -da -da? and the food is phenomenal and the people are amazing and um it's just awesome and it, you know heather's dad is the, is the genuine article he's an engineer a mechanical engineer and and when he uh when he talked to me he didn't talk down to me and he didn't talk to me like i was a stranger he talked to me to get to know me and we dated for six months and i was getting deep into youth ministry and all the things that go with the you know youth ministry and one night, uh, Heather and I were supposed to get together, and I said, I can't. I've got to go to Cincinnati on some youth ministry business. And I lied. I didn't tell the truth. I went all the way down to her parents' house, and I had a ring in my pocket. And I looked at her parents, and I said, I'd like your permission to ask your daughter to marry me. Now, this is a huge moment for a guy like me that didn't have any kind of boundaries in this area and again with grace and patience they both looked at me and said no 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 that's not true um they they said yes and but we are going to get to know each other even better over the next six months and um that's i mean that's even that that's exactly what happened i mean they just embraced me uh, Heather's dad had this amazing talent of making you feel like you are part of the family. Mm -hmm. There's no, there's no in-laws in that in 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 uh, Marcia and Stan Elder's family. You are once you marry their children, you are a part of the family, and they made it feel like you were home. And as I uh, as I got integrated into this functional family unit um i began to get influenced and i began to change the way that i approached family and um that my friends on november uh 2nd 2002 yep the uh going batty clan began with my wife saying i do um and me saying i do mm -hmm. And uh, so that's our story. There you go. Katie was born in 14 months later and uh, thus began our journey. And it was, you know, looking back at it now, um, it's just silly because we had gone to the same church together 
before we even met down in Cincinnati. Yeah, we were both at the vineyard. Yeah. And we were, and it's funny because this, this vineyard church in the small building that they were in had, what was it, seven services going on the weekend, and we never met each other in that whole entire time. And growing up, we were in the same area a lot. I went to church in a town called Wilmington, and I had an uncle and a cousin who played softball in these softball fields. And Kevin said his family played softball in those softball fields. And he was up in Wilmington all the time when he was young, and we never met each other. So God's timing is God's timing. Yeah, and, and so, the moral to this story is don't settle for Waffle House, my friends. <laughs> yes. Right. You know what I mean. You know what I'm talking about. God is bigger than the Waffle House. Anyway, no. I uh, So, yeah, that's our story. And yeah. um, we, we, we've we got a few other things that we're going to talk to you guys about. Um, but I'm telling you, man, it is, it is such a trip. Uh, we have a 14-year-old daughter and a 13-year-old son and a, uh, a, a 12-year-old, 12-year-old son, son and, and a 10-year-old son. And yeah. I, these are incredible people that we get to we get to raise and be blessed and um, we're very thankful and you know I, I I on the actual day of our anniversary you're working but yeah. we, we will enjoy it this uh, this weekend and you may not see a whole lot of us this weekend because we're going to enjoy it and be with our family yeah. but um, I'm I am totally excited and blessed to see what the next fifteen Coco years. Noel says TV it's all around. Yeah, so that's right. But I, we got something to show. Them, yes, though. we got our shows. story is over. Yeah. So I ordered soap from so, Hoffman Family Homestead, and I was so excited to get it because this is the one that I was the most excited about. This is I'm going to open it here, and it came in these cute little bags. They're like, awesome. Like she did such a great job with her presentation. Like when you open it up and there's tissue paper oh, yeah. in it, and it was, I mean, way to go, Mindy. Good job. So way to go. this is the one that I was the most excited about. This is her orange soap. And it, I mean, it doesn't look orange on the camera because it's washing out, yeah. but. Get it close, it'll be Oh shit. my gosh, it smells like an orange cream sickle. And I love it. And it smells like happiness. <laughs> so you must smell it, Max. Yeah. So I got that one. And then. I got one, <clears throat> she sent me a little one and it got, the, the little head got broken off of it, but it's a little cow. I don't know if you can tell that there. But then I also got a gingerbread one, which smells amazing. So, and I gotta show you this, cause this is really cute too. So, there's her little, and it's got like, it looks like frosting <laughs> on the top, but this one smells really good. And then it's got a little gingerbread man with it. He's so cute. And then, um, she sent me, I gotta open this little bag. Let's see. Oh, that's the orange one. There was another one too. Oh, here it is. It's in this, this little purple one. I think you should put this in your sense of thing and see what happens. No. And then she sent a charcoal tea tree it. soap, which um, Katie asked if she could use this because. Um, I have a you know, problem with she's, pimples. She's a teenager and every once in a while you have with that. Did it help dry? eczema? I have pimples eczema. <laughs> but this stuff smells it's so Ooh. good. And then. Your broken cow smells good Yeah, too. the broken cow smells good. But it, yeah, where did the, wait, where did the. What are you pa- looking for, dear? Oh, here. there it is. And then there's the soy pumpkin wax tarts. This smells like Thanksgiving. Pass it smells next. like pumpkin pie and all things wonderfully pumpkin. Oh, it smells so good. I love this. This. Good night, Krista. So, this is good. so good. Mm. And then she was so sweet and she sent us a housewarming gift. Let's part to see. You see my pumpkin wreath? And it's got Ta-da. a bee in it. She made that for us. Isn't that cute? I don't know if you know this or not, but it's for Batty. Yes. Yes. So, she makes these. And, like, you guys need to go check out um, their website. It's Hoffman Family Homestead. And they have a store, and she does this, she does the soap, she does candles, she does all sorts of stuff. And I'm so excited, because after the show, this goes on my front door, because that's why I don't want Christmas yet, because I want my wreath to go on my front door. We mix and match, it's not that big of a deal. So, yeah. So I was just, and she sent a really sweet note with it, um, which was really, really kind of them. So, so I just wanted to Can I read you. the ingredients? Yes. All right, so the ingredients is coconut oil, avocado oil, Olive oil, lard, palm oil, vitamin E, monkey fart scent, lye, still water, titanium dioxide. 
So, yes, you heard monkey right. Farts. Monkey farts. Monkey farts. I thought that was hysterical. Smells delicious. Yeah. Best monkey farts I've ever smelled. I'll yeah. tell you that. So, that is quite a treat. That was yeah, quite so that an exciting. Was, you got to so check excited. them out. Well, when it came, it came in a box that was like this. And I'm like, I just ordered soap. <laughs> I'm like, that's the hugest box ever for soap. But, um, yeah, so I was so excited about that, um, getting that today. So that was that was really awesome. This cow smells really good, by it the way. Does, it does I just, smell good. I don't that's wanna, the monkey farts one. You know, I don't, yeah. that's the one that I think is just amazing. Oh, yeah. man, my nose is hurting. So. All right, so there you go. Uh, that was a great thing. Um, we are uh, looking at the Going Batty Kitchen. So what's going on in the Going Batty Kitchen? Okay, so I am, because it's getting to be kind of holiday-ish time, I'm going to... Probably do another Cookie Friday recipe, and I'm thinking about Yay, Cookie Friday. Doing um, it's like a shortbread cookie that has like some like strawberry jam in them. Jammy um, Dodger. Yes, I think Dodger. that they're similar to a Jammy Dodger, except Jammy Dodgers I think may have cream in it and then um, the Dodgers. cookie on it. But I'm pretty excited about that. So we're gonna do. I think we're gonna do that. And let's see. I think I'm going to make a pumpkin pie out of the squash that I can't. So we'll so, call it. We'll call it pumpkin pie since it's faux pumpkin. Faux pumpkin. So it's pumpkin. It's, it's pumpkin. <laughs> so, pumpkin pie. Don't it's say stuff. that fast, folks. Yeah. It's a family show. So um, yeah, so that's what I have going on in the going batty kitchen right now. So. Oh, but you also made a uh, non bourbon bourbon chicken. Yes, I yes, I gotta tell them that story. Yes. So I'm in like I don't buy liquor. I don't I don't drink. I never have been a drinker. I I really can't. I have a hiatal hernia, and. When I drink any kind of alcohol, it just like my stomach will like twist up and it's awful. So I just don't. I've tried it. I don't need to try it anymore. Right. So, um, so I'm standing in. I'm like, okay. So the one thing that when we lived in Maryland, you could not buy any kind of alcohol in the grocery store. You had to go to a liquor store. So um, they didn't sell it in Wegmans. They didn't sell That's it right. in Shoprite. Right. You know, Mars, any place like that. Similar so, to here too. <clears throat> no. Like, you can buy beer and wine and oh, right, 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 all right, sorts right, right. of stuff yeah, in yeah, your yeah. grocery store. But not the hard stuff. I didn't know that. So, I'm standing, I like, I look at Kroger's first, and they didn't have it. And I was at Myers and they didn't have bourbon. And so, I'm standing in Walmart, and so I, I call Kevin, and I was like, Kevin, I need for you to go back to your drinking days. <laughs> I said, where do I find bourbon? And he I'm goes... I'm sitting at my desk going, what are we talking about? He's sitting in his desk at the church, and... <laughs> Pastor Julie walks by. No, um, I'm walking by Pastor uh, Julie. Pastor, he was like, hold on a second, Julie. I have to talk my wife through the alcohol section at the grocery store. So, <laughs> and all you hear in the background is, God bless her. <laughs> so, um, I didn't know you couldn't buy bourbon. I didn't know bourbon was a hard liquor. Now, so. let's clear this up so all of you don't think we're going down a bad path. We didn't end up buying any bourbon. We did. The bourbon chicken is non-bourbon chicken. It we used apple cider and bourbonless instead. bourbon chicken. <laughs> so and I bourbonless used bourbon. Apple cider and apple cider vinegar and some chicken stock in it. And it was actually really good. I had to I'm learning with this new homeschool curriculum. I'm having to be a little more She drinks a lot more with that. No, I no, have to no, plan a little, a little more. more. And so I actually did it I did it in the crock pot and it turned out mm -hmm. good. It did. It so, did. It really did. So I'm getting better because my crock pot cooking is very scary. Not now. It's so getting better. It's, but, yeah. you know, two two out of 40,000 is not a good, you know, <laughs> it's not a good score. So It's better than one out of 40,000. That's, That's right. true. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so yeah. the bourbon chicken worked out good and we didn't put any bourbon in it. Yeah. So yeah. it was just yeah. like... It's it. funny because you go to these, you go to these liquor stores and one small little bottle that you'll never use all of it and we don't yeah. want that in the house because, you know what a lush I am, but, um, I, I just don't, we don't need to buy a whole bottle of bourbon. And I'm like, honey, what, what, is there something else we could use? And she's like, well, I guess we could make apple cider or use, use apple, apple cider. cider in it, so. I'm like, well, giddy up. Let's do that. And it turned out wonderful. Yeah. So, yeah. all right. So, uh, let's move on from there to the homeschool update. Okay. So we're giving you a homeschool update. If you don't know, we're that weird family that homeschools our kids. So I have, and we're not that weird. I have something well, to show you guys. So I always stunk at multiplication always there's no video so, for the bourbon chicken yet i can do one this was the first but time i ever made it so she did the test um, run with us so my my fourth grader he is learning multiplication regular multiplication 
and he's struggling with it. He was struggling with it a little bit because of the whole where you have to kind of go up first oh, and then across first. Grade. I said fourth grade. Yeah. So you go up first and then across and then you got to do all your adding and then you put it down here and everything. Well, there is, and this may, again, because I'm not a teacher and I don't know, there's a thing called lattice multiplication. And it looks like this. If I learned multiplication this way, I would have been so much better at it. But, so, I, now this, just follow me here. I gotta stand up a minute so I can see what I'm doing. So what you do is you have like, so you have, um, let's see, yeah, 62 times 42. And so you multiply these two and you put it, this is the tens, this is the ones, and then you multiply these two and tens and ones, and then you do it the same way. You know, you keep going, so you do it here. Wait, hold on, I'm looking She's at that. She's doing it upside down. Yeah, so, yeah, six to two, and then six to four, and then eight to two, and then eight to four, and then so you write them down here. And then you do your addition. So you do all your multiplication first, and then your addition, and those diagonal lines is you, you add diagonally this way. And that's how you do it. And you come up with your answer here. And by golly, it is right every time. My son got every single one of them right when I showed him this way. Three days of crying doing it this way. Because he was just like, I mean, he's a smart kid and he's really good at math, but this just frustrated him. So we did it this way. And this was fantastic. So if you have a fourth grade, and you can get them where there's only like two of these cells. You can get them where it goes out six wide and only too high. This, this was awesome. So just saying. Now, as you know, I am a, an arithmetic and I don't truly believe math exists. And I'd appreciate it if you didn't force your mathematical beliefs on me. But our kids have to learn math, so he's not teaching them. That's right. So uh, Heather's come up with this great system and it is awesome. I didn't come up with it. It was something that we, She dreamed it out of nowhere. I mean, no. it just was like that. No, she you can look up lattice multiplication worksheets on the internet and all sorts of things will pop up for it. Oh, yeah. And so they can practice it. You can get it with numbers already there that they have to multiply. You can get blank ones like I got and you fill them in. Yep. So, But let's get off this math topic as quickly as we can because it's starting to hurt. Let's go to what else we learned in homeschool. Okay. So volcanoes. We're learning about geology, geology. and the earth structure Here and volcanoes. So this was yep. a gift that was given to us when we were in Maryland yep. um, by a lady named Allison. And it is a Smithsonian Institute thing. So it has the plat. This is actually plaster. And so we did the volcano and we had a piece of poster board, like the foam poster board. And we made like a scene that had palm trees. It's and, a kit. And um, it had animals and it had little Lego people. And then, so this one has, um, if you can see here, a little notch here. And it goes up in the bottom ah. there. Oops. Your mountain's falling yeah, off. Yeah, some of it's falling apart. But it goes up through here, and so you squirt your vinegar through this tube that's in a bottle, and you put your baking soda up here, and it, it bubbles up. So that was pretty awesome. They had fun doing that this week. So Katie and Miles got to paint the volcano. Uh, Jack and Max painted the little village. And, and I also painted the dinosaur. Yeah. Yeah. The other one. Yeah. So. so nice yeah, it was a it was a fun time, and there's also a little bit of chemistry involved yeah. too. Yeah. And so you baking know, baking soda and vinegar and, and all. They're also learning about, um, like like I said, the industrial revolution, about certain kinds of architecture. Um, you say you uh, Miles is making a making a castle with popsicle sticks. You know. So this is a very hands-on thing, and you I think that's very good to, for my lots kids. Lots of things are so, hard to learn, but once you learn yeah. them, never forgotten. Yep. There so. you go. Awesome. Well, that th I mean, there, there's a lot going on there. Yeah. Well, and we even learned like where the biggest volcano in our solar system is, on yeah. and, Mars. and why why the volcano on Mars is so big is because the, the Earth, the crust of the Earth moves, and it moves because it's kind of on this like a, like giant float. It's like a giant yeah. floating thing, and all of like the lava and stuff is kind of underneath. So the crust of the Earth moves. Well, Mars, it's solid. And yep. it doesn't move, so it makes like a shelf volcano where it keeps sh shooting stuff out and building up and building up and building up. And we learned about um, Mount St. Helens. We learned about um, Mount Vesuvius and Pompeii and how it dumped 
um, what was it, 16 feet of ash in 24 hours, yep. and it at wiped 70, out an entire... At 75 miles an hour, it came down yeah. the volcano. Yeah, so... Did they learn about the super volcano under Yellowstone? Um, we Well, we Not haven't yet. yet. We've learned about the Ring of Fire Krakatoa. that is there. Spoiler the, alert, kids. The, the Pacific Ocean and Krakatoa. Krakatoa. <laughs> they thought that was a very funny name, Krakatoa. Yeah. So. Krakatoa. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so that's what we've been... Those are the things that we've been learning, and it's been kind of fun. So, yeah. Uh, there you go. Um, yeah. So there, there is a. Uh, there, we won't talk about that. That's we'll okay, move on from fine. that. Yeah. Um, that we talked about the things you're learning. Uh, uh, Tracy had a question about. Have you ever heard of Coca Cola Chicken? I that have heard of good. that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, you cook chicken in Coca Cola. I or something actually like that. think that's in that one there. The, it probably that's is. The recipe book yeah. that I have. So yeah. yeah. So um, we are uh, we're headed into winter, and we've got to make these rabbits weather hardy. But we also got to protect them because they can't have winds blown on them; it'll kill oh, them. That's good to know, Nancy. So. She said you can track um, U.S. Uh, geological site can track volcanoes. Yeah. So he does. Um. And yeah, there's Coca Cola ham too, and ginger ale ham. And I have heard of that. I have heard yeah. of that. NASA on YouTube from space. Uh, old fashioned life. Mm -hmm. Hi, Don. Um, I'd like to buy a world of Coke. Okay. Um, do we have a garage? Yes, yes we, we do. Can. We're going to try to put um, the rabbits, we're going to try to put siding on the side of the rabbits so it breaks the wind and it doesn't get. We want them to be weather hardy, but we also don't want them to freeze to death. So while it's still above zero, we're going to keep them outside and we're going to put these uh, barriers on them to keep the wind from blowing all over the place so they can have a little bit of, of shelter but um they they have been uh they have been um holding up pretty well is there something else that we need to know about rabbits during the winter time that maybe we haven't thought of um we are still new at some of this uh homesteading stuff and we need to be teachable about that so if you guys have suggestions about the rabbits going through winter please share them with us we want um we want to uh we want to do honor them and do a good job taking care of them but we also want them to be weather hardy and so um that is something we're working on and learning more about uh, we already did the favorite things. There is a app that Heather wants to talk about. Actually, there's two of them. Two. So, um, two. Yeah, two. I, one of them I think I mentioned last week, but I, the the bigger the bigger thing that I mentioned was Khan Academy. But there is also one called Librivox, hey Max, come which over here. has a lot of books on, like a lot of your classical books, uh, Tom Sawyer, Huckleberry Finn, um, The Jungle Book. Uh, my kids have all used these. Um, when it comes to so what I have them do is like I'll find like the printed version of it most of the time if I can and then they can read along with it because um, Sometimes there's words in there that they don't understand and if they're doing their reading and I'm working with someone else Sometimes I can't help them. So um, like Katie's using it. She's reading the adventures of Sherlock Holmes right now um, the other Much the other better than like Call of the Wild. Oh, I'm yeah. She say. didn't particularly care for Call of the Wild. <laughs> Which I think is more or of Tuck a... Tuck Everlasting. Yeah. Those... It's more of a boys book. Oh, I like that one. I like Tuck Everlasting. 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 She got mad at Tuck Everlasting and, and threw, threw the, the book, book down the stairs. stairs. Yeah. Didn't she keep some of them in the freezer, too? Oh, Who was no. the one that kept them in the freezer? I no, that I was the report my, I put, like, I put no, like no. my report cards and anything that I got from the church in the freezer. Uh, <laughs> so. No, there was someone else that got mad at the book and like put it away or something like I that. Don't but know. that but, doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, no, Talk Everlasting. I love that movie. Um, I, I don't know how to read. So, Just kidding. so yeah, Liber Liber Libervox is an app. It's and it, like I said, it's got all sorts of books on it, um, and we use it because I want my kids to read a little more of the classical stuff because it because sometimes the wording in it makes them think and it stretches their vocabulary mm -hmm. so and it's stuff that you know people don't read a whole lot anymore and, and and there are a lot of good books out there that they're not reading so um and what the other thing that we used with that is so that um when we moved to ohio what so that we wouldn't be behind on our reading i actually downloaded the app downloaded the book and we would listen to um like we listened to tom sawyer from maryland mm -hmm. to ohio and so they got to hear the whole the whole book 
Which is really good. Boxcar children. Yes. yes. My yes. kids love, love the that. boxcar children. I love those so books. that yeah. was a that was a big deal. Yep. Yeah. And then let's see, the other website that I found was Garden. You can download from their website too. Uh yes. Mass Faith Three says. Yes, oh, by yes. the way, we're so glad you're with us. That we was are. a great video of that chicken trying to figure out how to get down that ramp. I laughed my rear yeah. end off. I was like, Oh come on, you can do it. Phyllis Diller, get down the stairs. You can do it. <laughs> It's the hair. It was Phyllis Diller. Yeah. So go check it, out. It's interesting Mass because um, I have been trying to read the Federalist Papers, which is a really hard read, but they have that on Livervox. Mm. So it's a lot easier to read when you can read along with it. That's <laughs> so, right. And um, so I've been like, you know, things like that. And uh, and, be, and actually, it's because uh. of the Mass Faith Three Girls. Um, the Federalist Papers, um, stuff written by um, um, Locke, was, what's his first name? Shoot. Um, his, his last name is Locke. What is his first name? John. Is it John? No, you worked no. with the John Locke. Oh, yeah, that's it. So, <laughs> that was just, yeah, oh, it is John. Okay. Ha-ha! <laughs> but um, I've been trying to, and, and I have to take those in kind of small sections just so that I can understand them. Um, but it, it's... I, and the reason that I'm doing that is it's what our country was founded on and the principles our country was founded on. So if I know those principles, I can be more educated in the decisions that I make when it comes to um, the people in charge and you know people we elect and how the government is supposed to, to run and you know things like that. Because uh, those kind of things interest me. They probably bore other people to tears, but you know... I just sleep. So um, when she's learning about that stuff, I'm like, okay, sweetheart. So <sighs> yeah, so that so Libervox, Libervox. I'm pronouncing it wrong. Liber, L I B. Liber, liber, liber. Libervox. L I B R B I. L I B R I. Tigger bouncing. V O X. It's Libervox. L I B R I V O X. So, um, but yeah, so that that's the one of the. The apps that I use. And the other one is Garden Compass. And this one's relatively new to me. And I really like it. And I'll show you what it looks like. So, hold on. Let's see. I'll show oh, it on my phone. Oh, Lord. Well, um, you, you're making them all. I know. They're, they're, all all, making, they're all scary. Scary. Where are you going? Are you I don't doing? know what I'm doing. Okay, here Press we go. your center button so you can open it. You gotta. Okay. They're okay. shaking because you I, held them too long. Okay. And so now that you're feeling. So, if you look down here. Donna Terry, thank you. Let's see if you can see it. Oh, no, there's a glare on my phone. Oh, okay, no. I can't show you. But it's called Garden Compass. Garden Compass. And what does that do? What you can do is if you don't know what a plant is, you can take a picture of it, and it will tell you what the plant is. If you have a pest or a disease problem on your plants, you can take a picture of it, and it will tell you what it is. This is a useful so, thing. It says, um, like, pest and disease, identify pest and disease. Um, identify plants. Um, I used something similar to this. I think it's done by the same people when I was a florist to identify flowers. And I would tell, like I'd have somebody on the phone and they would be like, yeah, I want, the, the flower looks like this and it has this shape. And I would tell them, download that app, take a picture of it. And because they would usually want to come in and talk about flowers, I said, Take a picture of it. It will tell you what it is. So that way you can tell me. So I know exactly what you're looking for. So, um, yeah. So it was, that, that's a pretty, that's a pretty cool app. So, yep. um, you're a pretty cool app. Yeah. So that, that's what I have. Oh. Awesome. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, there's a, uh, there's, there's some favorite things that we ho do home study wise and there's other things, uh, <laughs> favorite things that we uh, just do that are just like normal people and one of one of my favorite things this week has been the guitar um, Max is taking on the guitar and learning how to play it and it has been a joy watching him learn how to play the guitar so my favorite thing this week is the guitar the guitar and um, I figured while we're uh, while we're saying good night tonight I might uh, might play a few things you know not quite, but I it's just, close. So. It. so anyway, if you guys would um, be willing to uh, just uh, uh, close out with us a little bit, we're going to say goodnight because it's... It,
it's you, bedtime. Yeah, unless you have any questions for us, we'll be happy to. But um, I kind of forget any songs. Should is there one I should play for you? Because I can't remember any of them, other than uh, maybe some silly ones. Looking at the world through flies. Uh, um, looking at the world. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I do. I we really appreciate you guys. We enjoy uh, being with you, and we could think of Free Bird. No, I don't even know that one. Man. How funny is that? But. Um, we so really appreciate a beautiful scandalous night. Uh, maybe, maybe okay. if you could talk while I figure it out. Okay. I, well, I don't know what to say. I'm just, I'm, I'm looking at the, like some of the books that people are talking about, like Boxcar Children. Yes, that's a good one. Someone was, um, Anne of Green Gables. Anne of Green Gables the kid. He's read series. almost all of those. Yeah. And loved them. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. Like Federalist Papers is on here, uh, and let's see the Cooper Kids series. That's a great series. Yeah, oh, the yeah. Cooper Kids yeah, series. That's a good yeah, one. I've got um, I've got that. I've got the Chronicles of Narnia right now, and I have um, the Little House on the Prairie series. And we're doing that because we're talking about how structures were built, like how we've moved from structures. Hardy with, Boys. Hardy yes, Boys is a great series. They love those. Katie loves Nancy Drew. Nancy Drew. The Hardy Boys. In fact, Boys our level. our um. Our neighbor in uh, Maryland had a set of the Hardy Boys mystery series, like the entire big set of it, and she gave it to my kids when we moved. It was so sweet. Or Miss Melissa was awesome. Yeah. So um, yeah, yeah. So we've. Um, she was like an extra grandma. She, she was. was. She was. Uh, she's just her and and uh, Mr. Rick were just. Fan they're they are. They're they not was. They're they, they are fantastic people. So um, we've had. Um, like I said, I, I really like the fact that I can use that app and my kids, and they can pick any book that they want that comes along that they see that they like. They have to kind of t stay in the ch children's juvenile kind of section or I have to approve it. Yeah. And there there are, um, excuse me, settings that you can put on it because there are some things that you like don't want them to get. Just like at the library, they can check out a book that you're like, mm-mm. So um, you can have settings put on it where they can't look at anything inappropriate. So awesome. Well, so I'm kind of excited because I get to decide like a, some of my like a book that I was gonna read this year that was not on my list because I had stuff like uh, Shakespeare and Edgar Allan Poe. You have to read at least one of those this year. Huh? Yes. Edgar Allan Poe. Well, I was Evermore. Nevermore. Nevermore. The Raven. Yeah. Hey, we're not going to play tonight, but I can't remember the song, so I'll get <laughs> something ready. And uh, we're going to say goodnight. You guys are awesome. Thanks for joining us tonight. Um, we are so glad we're in community with you. We've got a lot happening to us uh, over the next few days, and so bear with us. But I'm going to pray for us real quick, and then we're going to bail uh, so you guys can uh, join along or you can uh, take off if that's not your thing. We are so glad. I love the why read Walden. That was the one book I did read. Um, Kevin is a big tease. <laughs> yes, I am. I'm going to wait until uh, stringing us along. Very funny. Um, I'm going to wait until I have something a little bit more ready so I don't, you know, hurt your ears. Um, let's, uh, let's pray and we'll, we'll go for it. Okay. Is that cool? Yeah. All right. Father God, we thank you so much for the privilege it is to be hanging out with this awesome community of people. Bless their lives, show up in unique and fun ways. And uh, Lord, thank you for the things that you've given us, a roof over our head, uh, future food that we've been able to harvest out of our gardens, and uh, also meat and protein and all the things that we get out of our chickens. And uh, Father, we thank you that uh, winter is coming, but we also pray for your protection and ask that you would watch over us and we would choose to do the right thing and help uh, everyone on this live stream just be blessed. God, thank you for your love. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. Thank you so much for coming. We're very glad you're here. We were with us tonight. Good night, everybody. I keep slipping off my thing. <laughs> I can't hit the button because I've got a guitar okay. in my hand. I will hit the button. Where did it go? Where's the button? Oh, finished. There.